You're listening to the Keep Optimizing Podcast to increase your traffic, improve your conversion rates, and grow your profits. Hello and welcome. If you are looking to improve the performance and return on investment of your marketing, then you've come to the right place. I'm Chloe Thomas, the host of this marketing-focused podcast, and it's very, very cool to have you tuning in to what is now our 22nd episode. Yeah, we're getting quite old now in podcast world. In today's episode, I'm talking to another Chloe. Yes, you've got two of us today, and we're going to be talking about Instagram growth because this month we are all about organic social media in the podcast. And in today's episode, episode, we're going to be talking about your hashtag strategy. We're going to be talking about what sort of content you should be sharing on Instagram, how to get that content organized to make your life easier and to make your account more powerful. We're going to be talking about stories, how to use those, uh, and lots of other kind of really cool tips and tactics. I mean, Chloe knows so much about this stuff and she really does share a lot with you today. So if Instagram is on your list, this is a must listen to episode. We're going to meet Chloe in a second or two, but before we do, please do check out the sponsors. This podcast is brought to you by Klaviyo, the ultimate e-commerce marketing platform for email and SMS messaging. Whether you're launching your e-commerce business or taking your brand to the next level, Klaviyo gives you the tools to get growing faster. That's why it's trusted by over 38,000 e-commerce brands. Build your contact lists and emails that pop and create marketing moments that build valuable customer relationships over any distance. Get started for free today. Visit klaviyo.com slash masterplan to create Create your free account. That's K L A V I Y O dot com slash masterplan. Today I'm chatting with organic social media expert Chloe Bubert. Chloe is an influencer and affiliate manager at Tailwind, which is an Instagram and Pinterest scheduling and analytics tool. And as well as helping lots of businesses make the most of their Instagram profiles, Chloe's also a fashion influencer and blogger in her own right. Hello, Chloe. Hi, Chloe. It's great to have another Chloe to chat with. Do you know, I've been podcasting for five years and this is the first time I've interviewed another Chloe. I am honoured. I feel like we should just aggressively use that word. <laughs> just, just go, Every sentence should start and end with Chloe. Hello, Chloe. Are you okay, Chloe? Thank you, Chloe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, listeners. Um, <laughs> Chloe, so thank you so much for joining us on the show because I know what we're going to be talking about today is something which a lot of not just e-commerce businesses, but businesses all over the world are trying to get to grips with is how you get Instagram working for your business. Um, but before we get into all of that, how did how did you get into s- social media? Such a great question. I was I had just moved to another state and my husband was in grad school. So I was very bored and I had a lot of spare time. And so I just kind of started actually as like a secondhand uh clothing Instagram profile. So more of an e-commerce focus. And what I learned through that experience was that the more I showed myself and my life and other things other than just what I was selling, the more my profile grew to the point where I started actually finding more success um, as a blogger than as kind of an online e-commerce or secondhand shop. And so that was a really great experience. About a year into that, I discovered Tailwind. Um, Actually, no, it was less than a year. I discovered Tailwind, started using Tailwind um, and learning about it, really loving it. And then a couple months later, I applied to work at Tailwind. So it's been a fun experience to see how blogging led me into the world of social media. And now I can use what I've learned to help our affiliates and influencers that we work with. That's pretty cool. To me, it it really shows that you you get the platform because you were trying to do an e-commerce store and you were doing such a good job of the social that you let the e-commerce store go and focused on the social. So um, it clearly, clearly that is a good sign that you know what you're talking about here. <laughs> Maybe not about e-commerce as much, but that's where your <laughs> listeners come in. Exactly. We we don't need to talk about how to set up the store. We just need to talk about how to get people excited in it. And it's it's something which I find I'm talking about a lot at the moment, but it's that that bit which, you know, you were saying about how the more you said about yourself and what you're doing, the more interaction you are getting. And I think it's a trend which we were see- we've been seeing for a couple of years now of people online wanting that human connection. 
And I think the impact of the pandemic has meant we're that trend has really accelerated and people are more more than ever wanting that personal connection. And I think that's where social profiles, especially Instagram, can really help people out. So is that something you're seeing in, in your space is that the more humanity we're putting into it, the better the results? Yes. I think that when I look at uh, an e-commerce Instagram page and it looks like a bunch of, you know, and this is a great place to start. So I don't want to put put anyone down for this, but when it looks like stock photos and like captions that aren't very personal to the business, you know, you see lower engagement. And then you can see a profile that maybe is a little more quote unquote messy or not as polished, but if it has its own character and personality, I find people are resonating more with that kind of just a little bit more real. Um, And I've definitely seen that trend as people are sharing kind of their quarantine lifestyle or how their business is pivoting in this time. All of that is really, really big right now. Yeah, it's it's like you go on to, um, and I'll be honest, our podcast, um, we we talk about the podcast, but we rarely share anything behind the scenes, which I really, it's one of my objectives for next year is to do more behind the scenes stuff. But it's a bit like when you you go onto a retailer and you see product shop, product shop, product shop, which have all come straight off the website. And then they had a massive delivery. So they took a picture in the warehouse of a massive pile of boxes. And that's the, 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 you know, the, the post, which has got all the interaction because it's just so much more real. Absolutely. The crazy thing is it's almost the easier posts to do once you get in the habit of them. But it's hard to get over that hump of thinking that you need to be perfect, that you need to have everything planned out. And I think it's too overwhelming as a beginner to balance those two things, the the curated posts and the spontaneous posts. And so that's why I do think people need to start with the planned curated posts, get comfortable and that's when you can really start playing around with things and having fun with it. So you said about planning there. So should should our planning for Instagram be along the lines of we have a diary alert that at two o'clock every afternoon goes, you must post something? Or is it more a case of sitting down like we would with any marketing plan and going, right, next week we're talking about this, the week after we're talking about that? What what works on Instagram? I think what works on Instagram is a lot of the same things done in a little bit of a different way. Um, And what I've seen working well recently is kind of having, and this is something that Tailwind offers as well that I, I love. It's like a, it's content plan. So you essentially have different topics. Um, and I like thinking about it as nine topics, uh, in, with the nine grid that we have. So if you on Instagram where, you know, someone comes to your feed, they see those top nine posts first and foremost. And if you have a different topic, um, nine different topics, making, building your content plan, like, um, one topic being education, one topic being, um, inspiring one topic being promoting your, your own products, like, each different topic, you're going to be sharing a lot of the same content over and over again, but you can twist it a little bit. And then the other thing to remember is if you're if you're building your plan this way, you're able to plan out in advance so you can kind of customize it based on the season, right? So maybe you're sharing a lot of the same types of images or the same types of content, but everything's specific to fall or getting into the holidays or a new launch you just had uh, or you have coming up. Um, there's a way to kind of build your plan, repurpose the same uh, kinds of images and and caption ideas, but give them a little something extra. Then you're planning out in advance. Um, and then another thing to realize is your audience isn't really seeing all of your posts. <laughs> yeah. As much as we'd love them to, they are not going, oh, it's another post from Chloe. Exactly. Oh, I must look at that. Oh, when, where's the next one? <laughs> yeah, right. they're, not, they're not reading it all, are they? No. And, and so if you can continue kind of in that pattern, in that planned pattern, you can actually 
capture different audience, your audience in a different way and kind of see which, which topics within your overarching content plan resonate most with people. So with that, I love that nine. Um, I love it because, um, you know, we can, if we, we, we just need nine ideas and we just redo them every nine days. Um, I love it because if you're posting Monday to Friday, you're not going to be doing the same thing every Monday because nine doesn't fit into five in that way. And if you're doing every day, again, nine doesn't fit into seven that way. So we're, we're, it's automatically bringing some, uh, some difference as we go through, through our week and our posting. Um, and it makes it really easy to make, you know, whenever anyone logs on and, and see, it goes to our profile page, they're going to see nine different things even if the 10th one that's just disappeared is the same as the first one. So I really, really like that idea of, of nine subjects that we can cycle through. Um, would you literally use exactly the same posts, same image, same copy, same hashtags again, nine days later, 10 days later? Not the same, but let's say you had a, you know, a piece of jewelry, right? You're going to photograph that piece of jewelry, probably are, you're going to end up with hopefully more than one photo that you like. Now it's going to look a lot better to share that nine posts later than, you know, the next day yet again. And so as you build up your portfolio, like don't be afraid to share. I, I think if you shared a post last month, you could share it again. I wouldn't share the same post every single month, but then there's also a lot of, there's a lot of different things you can do. You can put it in a template. You can edit it in a different, unique way. You can, you know, there's, there's a lot of different ways you can work with that content, or maybe you have a photo of the piece of jewelry. And then next time you share a video of the piece of jewelry, like there's a lot you can do there to really make it look a little bit different and kind of draw in your audience in a new way, but they're already familiar with you. And that's the part that I think is important too, is I, I've noticed from my experience when I was growing more quickly, I was taking photos in four to five spots over and over again. And people recognized the background. They felt connected to it. They'd seen it before, but it's a little bit of a different image. So you don't need to be reinventing the wheel but you also don't want to be sharing the same exact thing. It's it's finding kind of a balance there, a happy medium that allows you to not feel so overwhelmed, but um, still provides kind of that consistency for your audience. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. There's that consistency, but you're doing something something new each time. And one of the things which we've been been talking a lot about this month is user generated content. And the use of customer reviews. So if if like the first item of our nine was our, you know, we got a perennial bestseller necklace, so we'll stick with the jewelry theme. Might it be that, you know, the first time we come around, we just share a picture of it. The next time we come around, we share a picture of someone wearing it. And then the third time it comes around, we send, we share a, you know, maybe a customer review of that product. Would that fit? Oh, absolutely. I I even think the customer co- review could be one of the nine, you know, topics. Maybe every nine posts you share a customer review, you edit it in the same template so it all looks consistent. Maybe you can switch out the colors um, within your brand palette, but I, I think people are really loving seeing text on Instagram um, lately. I know it's been controversial in the past, but I see that working really well, especially with some of the creative ways that you can edit it to make it look really unique and, and very intentional. Now, you mentioned something um, a couple of minutes ago, which will have pricked up some ears, which is growth on Instagram. So growth <laughs> of followers. And is it a case, as it so often is with social media, that growth comes from great content first and foremost? Or are there some hacks? I think it's, again, like everything, it's a balance. Um, Great content is important, but what is great content? I mean, that can be so many different things to so many different people. If you think about like a meme account that can get, you know, 500,000 followers in a month or something, they had a couple of viral meme posts that people were constantly sharing. And now, you know, they have this enormous presence. So that great content can also mean someone who's investing, you know, thousands of dollars in creating like the most high quality content. Um, so 
yes, but what is great content for you and your business and your brand? That's a question you really have to wrestle with. And I think it comes from experimenting with different things, using the tools that are going to actually be proven to help you with growth, like hashtags, like getting people to save and share your posts, being more strategic, having a content plan like we've talked about, um, and then seeing how your unique audience is reacting and responding. And the other thing is, I think since we're in an e-commerce, we're, we're all e-commerce people here, you know, you know by now that having a strong Instagram presence is not going to do anything to your bottom line. It's not guaranteed to, at least. So finding the most effective ways that actually get people to your website, having that link in bio tool, like our smart bio tool that is going to actually help you get people where they can make a purchase is more important here than just getting your follower account to whatever your dream follower account is. Yeah. And um I one thing which we've which we've um actually no let's let's talk links for a minute because that is one of the big challenges for e-commerce in particular on um Instagram and justifying it is that you can't really link, can you? <laughs> I mean, it's it's not like Twitter or Facebook yes. where you chuck a link in and there's that direct tracking as well as the fact that someone can easily find you. So should we, you know, you mentioned about the, the bio link, which is what everyone gets on Instagram, no matter how many followers they've got. So should we be, um, you know, just putting our homepage in there or do we need to use the, the more clever dynamic tool that you were just um, kind of touching on there? I think a dynamic tool is is really important for e-commerce. I think if you have uh, a website where you know traffic is your number one goal for uh, because of ads or something, then maybe. But even then, you can still you know be linking to specific pages and giving people. I like to think of it as like your table of contents and Instagram is, in my opinion, more of a homepage than the homepage of your website. Because if someone, you know, see, if you're with a friend and they say, oh my goodness, you have to see this candle that I got, like it smells so good. They're not going to search you. Maybe they'll search you on Google. They're not going to go to their your website first. They're going to look for you on Instagram. And so if you have a link in bio tool that someone can click and then it has, you know, sale items, um, holiday items, whatever it is, they're probably, in my opinion, just thinking of the psychology of it, more likely to go, oh, well, you know, I still need a present for my grandma. I'm going to click through and I'm going to end up on this page and suddenly they've made a purchase versus just going to your website. Uh, I find that people in e-commerce have more success with the Lincoln Bio tool and our tool Smart Bio. I love because it actually has the two options, you know, because most link and bio tools just give you the options for the button links where you can just list the different links, or you can have the the mirroring grid from your Instagram profile with whatever Instagram posts you were trying to link. Ours allows for button links at the top, and then you also can link to each post. Uh, so that way, in your actual posts, you can be saying, you know, like we were saying with the jewelry, you know, you have that piece of jewelry that if someone clicks on that post through your smart bio, it will take them to that product page, but you don't miss out on having kind of the sale and the home page and those important uh, factors or button links at the top as well. Very nicely explained. Um, <laughs> Something else which we which we haven't talked about yet, but which is kind of like um, glaring in its in its absence from our conversation is stories. Now, should we do a story? You know, when we're thinking about that that nine content plan. So today is day one of our nine, and we're posting about something in our posts. Should we be replicating that in our stories, or do we do something different with our stories? Both. Yes neither, whatever. There's so <laughs> many things you can do with stories. And I really feel like there's no, there's a less clear formula for stories because 
the important thing about stories, I was just thinking about this yesterday because my stories views had been a little lower than they normally were. And then um, I, and I hadn't posted on Instagram for a while. And so I looked again last night and I had posted uh, a poll and on the poll, a lot of people voted and um, suddenly my views were more than they usually are and nothing had changed on my feed. So I thought it was proving to me kind of a hypothesis that goes around that the more engagement you have on your stories, the more people answer your polls, quizzes, whatever, reply to your stories, share reactions to your stories, the more those are going to be distributed through Instagram, where there's maybe less of a connection between the stories and the feed than I had originally thought. And again, a lot of this is just, there's no way to get into Instagram's <laughs> secrets and kind of, you know, share exactly how it all works. We're all just learning. But um, I think that stories is important because it's a way to have like continue to build engagement between you and your audience is a way to reshare your content from your feed again sadly a lot of people are not going to see your feed post and your story post so yes you can share the same thing maybe you make it a little bit different a little bit fun maybe you add a gif maybe you add a poll about the post something that's going to Get your audience more interested to keep tapping and watching the rest of your story series. Um, I love all the in, the engagement tools within stories. I think there's a lot to do there, a lot you can work with. I also love that people are just more open to kind of whatever content you share. Maybe, Chloe, you share you drinking a cup of tea before this podcast and say, I have a, another Chloe coming up in a few weeks on the podcast. <laughs> like Something like that is, it's just kind of building interest, putting people, you're putting yourself at the top of people's minds. Maybe they'll go to your page after that. Um, so I do think stories is, like I said, less formulaic, um, but it is still important to use that as a way to connect with people, just like all of social media. Yeah. And I, I think there's a, there's a lot to be said for using all those extra widgety things you can add onto stories, like you were saying with the polls and the countdowns and the ask a question and the, all those different things, which, which just drive that engagement and which, you know, with a couple of taps of your thumb, it's done. Yes. It is a simpler way to do it than some of the other, you know, things we have to do for social media that can take all of our time. <laughs> Talking of which, hashtags. Because yes. um, <laughs> each social social media engine has its own way of doing hashtags, you know, and um, Twitter, it's like less is more. Um, LinkedIn seems to be still finding its way, but less seems to be better than more. But Instagram, from what I've always heard, is the more hashtags, the better. Um, is that the case? I think yes, if you're if you know what hashtags to use and you have a plan. So no, putting, you know, all the <laughs> hashtags in the world Any isn't old gonna hashtag. do Yeah, that's not gonna do anything. Um, but hashtags I think are so important. Some people are like, Well, I don't ever, you know, use hashtags on Instagram. Like I'm not I don't follow hashtags, I don't uh, like, or I don't click on them or whatever. And I'm like, but you don't realize that Instagram doesn't care whether you click on them or not. Instagram is tracking which posts you engage with, what hashtags are on those posts. And they're going to show you similar posts in, in your feed because that's just how it works. So I, I recently am like obsessed with home decor, like probably every person in 2020 who's stuck at home. <laughs> and I started as a fashion blogger. I still am. But my entire feed is home decor posts with a couple of fashion posts thrown in. And last year it was all, it was flipped. Why is that? I'm continuing to engage in those posts. I'm continuing to like and save and, and share those posts. The algorithm is not showing me my favorite marketers. It's not showing me my, you know, even some of my favorite bloggers. I'm not necessarily sh posting anything with home decor hashtags or following 
any home decor hashtags or liking them, but the algorithm is attuned to what I am interested in. So for a creator, for an e-commerce business, you need to know which hashtags are going to get the attention of your audience. And thankfully, you know, it's, in my opinion, you can be a little bit more strategic and niche down to a great place with an e-commerce business because you have a product, you have something that you are, you know, you have kind of an overarching, you know, brand and you're not necessarily like a lifestyle blogger sharing all the various things that could happen. So I really think for e-commerce, hashtags are even more effective because you can figure out um, what your audience is looking at, what their what their feeds are looking like, and then study those posts, see what hashtags are there. Again, I love Tailwind's hashtag finder um, because one of the things that Tailwind does is as you're writing your caption, hashtags are being generated that are connected to or inspired by some of the the content that you've written in your caption. So then you have some to choose from. You can also add your own. You can save different lists. I love that because then you can test out how well a post does based on which list you used. That's huge. Um, I think that if you are going to study anything in your on your feed, studying your hashtag success is one of the best ways to grow. Um, and studying which posts get the most likes, or I'm sorry, not likes, uh, saves and shares. are Those are kind of the things I like to watch for. I think those are the biggest kind of growth. Those lead to the best like growth patterns. Um, so yeah, hashtags. With the Tailwind Hashtag Finder, you can look at the various different types of hashtags. So like it has niche hash- hashtags. It has bigger hashtags that where they're very competitive, um, where there's a lot of people on them and then, you know, some hashtags in between. So there's different categories there. And I would recommend using a variety of hashtags. You don't want to go all competitive. You don't want to go all niche hashtags. You want to have hashtags, some that are where you're going to be at the top of maybe like a hundred posts in the hashtag. You also want to go on, take the risk with some competitive hashtags where maybe you won't be anywhere near the top, but maybe you'll, your post will be seen by more people because of that. And then some in the middle where you're really able to kind of, that's where you can see some major growth when there's, you know, maybe 30,000 posts on a hashtag and you can get closer to the top there. That can be really huge for your profile. And as I say, I do love the, uh, the hashtag suggestion tool and it's color coded everyone it's color coded so literally you just go well i just want dark green ones today and i'll i'm literally tra- pretending to hit the screen and select my dark green hashtags as i'm saying this I get but to you, see know, it. <laughs> you you see the words and you can just you know pick through and it's 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 so easy so much easier than using instagram search bar which is a nightmare for hashtags um but something which we which we've 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 alluded to what happens in the tailwind um tool a little bit but what we haven't talked about is one of what I think still, I mean, I've been I've been talking about this for 10 years now, but I still think that one of the one of the key mysteries that people often don't tap into in the world of social media that makes your life so much easier is the world of scheduling. Um, yes, people, you can schedule so you don't have to be there at 2 a.m. to post. You can just let the technology do it. So um, do you want to, uh, or Chloe, could you tell us a little bit about are the best ways to do that scheduling to make make what we're doing more efficient and also to give us all that ability to make sure we're putting the right tests in place and to, to get greater control of our activity so we can improve it? Yeah. Well, first of all, the best thing you can do is whatever works for you. So everybody's different. Everybody has a different personality, a set of skills that's led you to this strange place where you want to have your own online business. It's, it's not everybody, it's not made for everyone. And so it, it brings in a lot of unique personalities and unique skill sets. Um, and it's so important to not kind of force yourself into a system that does not work for you because it's not sustainable. So I think that a scheduling tool like Tailwind can be so effective for so many people if you use it in the way that works for you. Um, for some people, that's going to be, 
okay, I hate photography. I hate making graphics. I hate, you know, the, the photo part of it is just a nightmare to me. Um, maybe for you, that means you spend one day every two months building a profile of images that you can use. And that's like a day that you treat yourself that evening because, you know, you, you put in all this hard work. But once you have all the images uploaded in Tailwind, you kind of can breathe easy. And then you can move into um, the fun part for you, which is maybe kind of figuring out which topics you're going to use. Oh, this this photo looks great for an educational post where I'm sharing how I do this or sharing a little bit more education regard, in regards to whatever my, my product is with my audience. Whatever that may be, um, having the photos maybe empowers you to do the rest of it. Or maybe you you struggle with the captions. And so every, you know, once a week or once every two weeks, you have your images that you kind of have fun selecting and, and you have to kind of get those topic ideas and have kind of a script for yourself that you've written out where you start the post like this and then in the middle you throw some unique you know, little insight in, and then you always end the same post with a question or something like that, where it's kind of like a Mad Libs strategy. And you don't have to just come up with everything out of thin air. You can really plug and play there. That's helpful for some people. Um, I like to look at everything week by week. Some people can post a month out. That is so inspiring. I would never be able to do that because I'm just not that in control of my life and planning. But um, a week works well for me. It's not quite nine days, but I don't always post um, every day. And and since I'm not an e-commerce business, I think for me, I don't necessarily have the same topics that I'm sharing. Um, it's a little different, but I do think that works super well for an e-commerce business. So maybe you sit down every nine days or every nine posts. Maybe you sit down every week and you plan out kind of the first half of your nine posts, whatever it may be. I love just getting the images uploaded, placing them in the nine grid where you want them to be so that they look pretty, and then working through your captions and hashtags. Uh, for me, what works is having an image day or an image moment, having a break, and then having a caption moment, taking a break, and then having a hashtag moment because they're all very different uh, parts of my brain. And if I try to like, I work so much more quickly when I have all the photos done and then I work on the captions at another time versus if every single day I just tried to take the photo and come with the caption caption and make sure I'm using the right hashtags, it would take so much longer because my brain is like transitioning between all of these different parts. So that's kind of my overall advice, but then my personal advice, what works for me. Yeah, and I I love those different approaches. I think it's so important that you find the right approach, and and I think scheduling can unlock so much of a better performance for so many people because, like you say, you can you, when you want to focus on it, you can focus on it when you're in the right mind space and that bit of your brain's active. But yeah, like you, whenever I hear anyone saying they do all their their social in um for a month in advance, I'm like that sounds a exhausting and like a day of hell. <laughs> it's like I don't know how, really but appeal. <laughs> I'm proud of you. <laughs> yeah. Well done. <laughs> but look, uh, Chloe, we're going to pause now for a reminder of our sponsors, and then we're going to talk about the wider world of organic social media. It's safe to say that most of us have been doing more shopping online lately. And if you're an e-commerce brand, that means you might be seeing more first-time customers. But once they've made that first purchase, how do you keep them coming back? Well, that's what Klaviyo is for. Klaviyo is the ultimate email and SMS marketing platform for e-commerce brands. It gives you the tools to build your contact list, send memorable emails, automate key messages and more. Way, way more. Whether you're launching a new business or taking your brand to the next level, Klaviyo can help you get growing faster. And it's free to get started. Visit klaviyo.com slash masterplan to create your free account. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash masterplan. Okay, Chloe. So far, we've gone deep into Instagram marketing and growth. Now you're going to get to wow us with your insider knowledge about the whole of organic social media. So for the following questions, your answer can be anything to do with organic social media, which of course does include Instagram. So Chloe, are you ready for these? Yes. 
Right, let's start with organic social media newbie advice. If we've inspired someone to take their first step with organic social today, what do they need to know to give themselves the best chance of success? It takes a long time to figure out what you enjoy about organic social and what's going to work for you. So don't give up after one week, one month. Keep going. Give yourself time. I promise you will eventually start reaching your goals. I guess I can't promise that, but I really believe you can. (laughs) But I I like the fact you said the bits you enjoy, because I think half the battle is finding a social media platform and a way of using it that you find fun. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Once you've found the fun bit, once you've got started, you've got to keep optimizing. So what's your favorite way to improve organic social media performance? My favorite way to improve performance is just steadily growing based on kind of those things I mentioned, hashtags, creating posts that people are going to save and share more frequently, and then using the newest Instagram tools because Instagram loves when you do that and they will reward you like reels, uh, video content, and even all the, you know, as they add new little widgets in the stories. Um, Just don't try to do it all at once, but as you're growing and as you're learning and feeling more empowered, maybe every week you add one little new thing that you haven't tried before, or you try to improve a hashtag or a hashtag series or list um, in some way. And then over time, you will see way more results if you just kind of take it slowly but surely. Nice. Okay. It's impossible to improve our marketing unless we're monitoring the performance, but the list of stuff we could monitor can be overwhelming. So what for you is the number one organic social media KPI? For an e-commerce business, I would say it's important to monitor the links that are going to your shop page. Uh, So over time, you might see a growth in followers. That's awesome. But is that leading to more people clicking on your page and shopping um, on your site? That is huge. And so that's why I love the Smart Bio link for e commerce. Nice. Okay. Finally, it's crystal ball time. What's coming up in the next six to 12 months that we should be getting ready for in organic social media? One thing we haven't talked about is TikTok. And I think that using videos, short form videos that are really, I mean, you, once you learn how to do it, it's, it's not too challenging to put together a simple little video that can get a lot of attention that you can share on Instagram and on TikTok. Um, that's going to just be happening more and more. And just like stories where not everyone was using it at once, now everyone's using stories. So get comfortable with short form video and it will be worth the learning curve. Nice. That's some great advice. Well, look, Chloe, we are nearly at the end of the show. So could you please let the listeners know where they can find you and Tailwind on the web and social media, please? Yes. So for Tailwind, you can visit tailwindapp.com. You can start a free trial for Instagram or for Pinterest. Uh, We have a, we can do 30 Instagram posts per, uh, for our free trial. So you could really try it out posting every day for a month. Um, And then on social media, you can find us at Tailwind app on Instagram. And we also have a really great code with Chloe for $30 off a Tailwind uh, membership or subscription, whether that is kind of one of our annual plans, if you try the free trial and really love it and want to commit for the year, or if you just want to try it out for a few months, we have this awesome $30 off code if you go to tailwindapp.com slash master plan. Nice. And that is, that's quite a lovely deal. So, um, so thank you. You, uh, you, Chloe, and everyone at Tailwind for sorting that out for us. And guys, it's well worth going and checking it out. So just head to tailwindapp.com forward slash master plan where you can get that great deal and give Tailwind a go. Um, Chloe, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. I, my list of things I now need to do on Instagram is now ridiculously long and I suspect everyone <laughs> else's as well, which was after all the point of this interview. So, um, so thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. So there you have it, everyone. How to get your Instagram performance considerably better, how to grow it, how to get your posts right. I love that that idea of nine topics. So my brain was going, right, so we'll do 
one of our best sellers. Then we'll focus on maybe a customer review for number two. Number three, we'll talk about what's going on around the business. Uh, number four might be what's coming up in the future. Number five might be something silly. Uh, number six, we'll do another bestseller. Number seven, best selling product lines. Number eight, maybe an offer or a free PMP reminder, something like that. And then number nine, our latest blog. And then that's it. You just cycle through those nine in whatever frequency you want to post with your those stories as well. So I thought that was that was just a really sane way of making sense of the of the Instagram um, process. You know, to make sure you're always putting something interesting up, something a bit different, uh, and keeping it nice and fresh. I thought Chloe's um, recommendations on how to approach scheduling was really clever. I never quite thought of it in that way that it's not a one size fits all. So apologies, any of you who have ever tried to make it do my way. You know, find your own way. Maybe, and I, th- I thought that batching idea, do all the images, take a break, do all the hashtags, take a break, do all the captions made a lot of sense. And I also like that idea of finding whatever's new on Instagram anything new that pops up in your, you know, those little widgets you can add to your stories or new tactics that that come up, doing those because Instagram, strangely enough, loves promoting the new stuff it's put live. So I hope you found um, all of that useful. I hope it's given you lots of things to do with your Instagram because it certainly has mine. And you can find links to all of what we discussed, including that great offer for $30 off um, the Tailwind app itself and the full transcript of this episode, important notes and more at keepoptimizing.com, which is an S, not a Z, remember? And next week, our organic social media specialists are joining me for a live Q&A webinar, which is your chance to get your questions answered. So head to keepoptimizing.com to register for the live event or to watch the replay if we've um, already done it. But of course, if you wait for the replay, you won't get the chance to have your own questions answered because that's just a video. Um, It's not interactive, the replay. Thank you for tuning into this episode of the Keep Optimizing podcast. Our whole set of episodes about organic social media are now live, so you can listen to them all. And then make sure you tune in um, next Wednesday, because then we're going to be starting our series of four shows, five shows even, about content marketing. Because as we move into 2021, I know a lot of businesses are trying to improve their connection with their customers. So please do tell your fellow marketers even about the show because this month's social media episodes combined with next month's content marketing episodes are really going to help everyone build that stronger connection with your customers. To that end, we are currently planning our topics for 2021 and I would love to know what you would like us to focus on. Just get in contact via Twitter or Instagram with the hashtag keep optimizing and um, I look forward to finding out what you want us to talk about. Have a great week and make sure you listen to the next episode so I can help you to keep optimizing your marketing. Access everything Keep Optimizing at keepoptimizing.com. That's with an S, not a Z.